welcome back all of you and here and then we are to the next day's program of this uh, procurement and then uh, we have now completed the procurement contacts and now we are going to go for the supplier qualification actually. so we are going to begin supplier qualification is a very tough one <clears throat> so we'll have a very So the third pillar of sourcing is completed. The fourth pillar of uh, procurement contract is completed actually. And then we are into the fifth pillar called the supplier qualification. So we are now going to demonstrate it on the new BU. So we'll now create a new BU and then start our activity on this now. Right? So one thing is what we had to use the same, uh, uh, they use on RDS actually. Right? They use uh, this thing now. So, <clears throat> so go to the manage business unit and then we're now using. Click on setup and maintenance. <clears throat> it's called manage business unit. So we'll now be creating a new business unit for this. Click on it. Click on plus. <clears throat> So let us now create a new business unit. <clears throat> so we go there, go for it, and then and do it. <clears throat> so the business unit is going to be created. Then afterwards, we'll now uh, go to the assign business unit business function and then have the procurements enabled actually. So go there. It is a T01 business unit. Normally, location is not an important one. So you normally create it on US1 business view set and drop it down and then choose the US1 view set and click on search. And then I click on search. So this one, and, then this one. and that's it. This is more than sufficient for us. My manager is uh, no, is optional. It is only for information purposes. And then location sometimes has got some controls, but that is also not mandatory. Actually. If I'm saying one <clears throat> So our business unit is ready. So once when this is done, we are going to give what assign business unit business function. Go there, click on done now. <clears throat> Come out of it. And then go there. And then go to the uh, we are already in this place. Fine, go, there. go to the financials. There's a scope specific task. So we go, to go there and paste it here and assign business unit business function. So select the scope, select NAT, and then apply and go to task. It is a T01. <coughs> Click on search. <coughs> select and then click on save and close. So here uh, I will be enabling uh, mainly the middle management is going to be enabled, and then uh, payables invoicing, uh, uh, payables invoicing, and then uh, the procurement functions as well. Procurement, and then uh, uh, procurement contract is not a fact. Right? Receiving and then requisitioning. So re receiving and requisitioning are client business functionality, so, and then procurement is the service provider function. So we are enabling these things on and see what exactly. So requisitioning, receiving, and then procurement functions. So this much is sufficient. Right? Middle management is also ready. So this much is sufficient for this exercise action. And we'll drop it down. And then I will now say, uh, if you see this place now, uh, <coughs> we'll now go to what operators we'll go there. <coughs> we'll now go to the Argama CM training. And then there, <coughs> I will now go to what? We'll now go to the third one. Mission interface structure. So we will be concentrating only on the ledger, <coughs> COA, and then legal entity, business unit, and then the master org. Right? We will not be getting any child org. Even master org also, we are going to use the existing one. Right? So we can uh, share the master org across uh, multiple uh, BUs if the COA is going to be safe. So the org, the child org, and then any child org can be shared across BU basically, mainly because what happens if the COA is safe, what happens you can very well use it. And the COA is a, a hot of a uh, child org's accounting actually. 
So go there. So we'll be doing only up to BU. New BU is there. So we are going to put this one. Use primary letter is the one. Primary letter is what? Use primary letter. Use primary letter. And then give it that. So drop it down and then choose it. Click on search. US primary ledger. Fine. So along with that, US. So ledger legal entity is a combination. So vision is using multiple combinations. We are not using the first combination. And then I put a tick mark on the bill and That's it. So this much is sufficient actually. Correct. This much is sufficient. And then I can give a save and close by which what happens? The assigned business unit business function is now copied. So we are not given this much. So we are not even worried about uh, what happens. Uh, your uh, organization inventory or fine because this model is going to concentrate only on supplier qualification actor. <clears throat> so the uh, balance is not required. The BU is sufficient. BU is sufficient for this exercise actor. <clears throat> then afterwards, what happens? You go to the manage locations and then uh, create a master and child or fine. It is actually not required at all. I don't know why I've done it actually. Uh, we will see. Fine. If it is really required, then we will not go for it. Myself. I don't think uh, these two are required actually. We will not uh, leave it as such. <clears throat> so, assign business unit is there. And then uh, we have to do the other actors. Fine. Now, we are going to create users actually. Fine. Here I am struck actually. Fine. I, I made some uh, RD. And then uh, in the previous training, what happens? I made a lot of RD, but it didn't work at all properly. So, if you go there, click on it. It will now open up the SQM uh, this thing now. So we have a STM, uh, what's called uh, screenshot is there. Fine, STM screenshot is there. And then of course, uh, we have one uh, white paper on SQM. <clears throat> so we'll now have a look at it. Uh, SQL query, supply call, yes, this is the one. 70, 72. 72 is a paper, is a beautiful paper actually. So you go there. And then I made some RD and then it didn't work at all properly. So this time I'm not going to make an R&D. I will now leave the R&D to you actually. 72 is a white paper on the SQM actually. So it's an excellent white paper. If you go through the document, it will be giving you a lot of things. So if you go down and then see, fine, you will not be able to understand it directly. If you go on after the training, you can very well understand. Fine, after the training is over, what happens, you can very well understand. So here, there are uh, four types of people which are there in the SQM actually. Fine. Uh, SQM uh, qualification manager or admin there. Fine. There will be a responder. Fine. And then uh, again, the qualification manager is accepting. And then there is an evaluator. <clears throat> Fine. So in the diagram, there are only three people are there. One is a qualification manager. One is a responder. <clears throat> Fine. Is a responder. And then one is an evaluator. And then apart from we will be having an approver also. Fine. So I clubbed different roles now. Fine. There are four people who are involved in the SKM. One is a qualification manager. One is a responder. One is an evaluator. <clears throat> and then one is an approver. So uh, if you go down and then see, there are four roles which are there actually, for the SQM. <clears throat> there are four roles are there. So you can even uh, go through this. It's not possible for you to understand now. But after the training, you can understand very well. Whatever is written there, you can very easily understand actually. <clears throat> so go down. Now. There are four roles are there actually. Yeah. So one is what supplier qualification is a role. And then one is a supplier sales representative is a role. And then supplier administrator's role, and then procurement application administrator. So I gave different different roles for uh, admin, responder, evaluator, and then approver. But it didn't work properly. Fine. So once when you go through the document fully, you will be understand to whom we attach att attach which role actually. Fine. Uh, so uh, in this exercise, I'm not going to make an R&D or this. No, fine. I'm going to give all the four roles to all the four people. Fine. That way, I'm going to begin now. So let me go and then take my users and then I do it. Fine. So you make an R&D, you study it and then give only the appropriate role to appropriate people. Actually. It explains a lot of this. Right? So much of the things are explained. You will understand it. What do you think is, uh, uh, I need patience to what happens, uh, go through it. But I I read half and then I did it and it was not working properly. So this time what happens, I'm not going to experiment on it now. Right? The roles, I will not give all the roles to all the people. <clears throat> Fine. But in reality, you have to give only the appropriate roles to appropriate people. Actually. <clears throat> So in this one, I'm going to get all the roles. So I'm going to have four four users now. Fine, brother. So I'll go and create the four users actually. <laughs> so click on search. Click on that. So manage users. So I go to the manage users now. You go to the manage users. So let me create a user now. Fine, click on first. 
So we already created up to eight users. No point. No see how many users are here. No point. Three zero one and EMP eight is there. So only EMP eight only we create. So nine, ten, eleven, and twelve we are going to create. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, no problem. We'll locate nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So the last name is what EMP nine. He is admin actually. Zero one underscore. He is going to be admin. So T zero one underscore EMP nine. At the rate gmail dot com. So user is what T zero one underscore EMP nine. So T zero one underscore EMP nine somewhere. So person type is what employee. <coughs> So here I will go. That is a US one. Fine. The illegal ID is US one. But the business unit is ours. Fine. The T is zero one. So business unit is ours. So that means what this employee is now associated via our BU to LEA. EMP nine. Job is what I will not put something now. Some job. This is always preferable to have a job for a legal employee. So the remaining are not mandatory. Location is also a very important one. Uh, we will not bypass it and see whether it works properly or not. I don't think uh, location will not play a role. Fine, that is what I feel now. Fine, I'm not giving any location also. So the ninth employee is ready. So ninth employee is ready. So we have now completed the ninth employee. So we'll now go on then for 10, 11, and 12. Actually. We'll now create three more employees for us. So one of the, this is he's going to be that pin now. The next guy is going to be a responder. Actually. The next guy is going to be a responder. So is EMP ten. Is a T zero one underscore T zero one underscore EMP ten. Great Gmail dot. So is a T zero one underscore EMP ten. Nine ten, and then we go there. The right is employee. <coughs> Is a US one. So here it is a T01. T01 business unit. So there's a the tenth employee is ready actually. Fine, you can't say what close. Then eleventh and twelfth. So the eleventh employee is going to be an evaluator. So eleventh employee is evaluator. So first is an admin, and then the next one is a responder, fine. and then the next one is the evaluator. You will be eleventh employee will be behaving like a the evaluator. Actually. <clears throat> the approver also has to have certain rules actually because he is going to approve the supplier actually so uh, i am not very sure about whether if he is not having any specific rules it will work or not uh, because i had an issue in the last training actually so i am not going to give approver also all the rules actually. so that's it the 11th employee is going to be evaluated actually so same and close and then I will locate the final one who is approved. Actually. But you you go through the document and then segregate the roles. So if you can segregate it nicely, it will be great actually. But I don't have the bit of patience to what happens. I study that actually. So E P twelve, and then a T zero one underscore. Sorry. So person type is employee. So is US one. Business unit. That's it. So I'm not going to give all the rules to all the people actually, but that is not correct. So take on seven rules. So let me go to the what's called. Uh, I'll now go to the tools. Go to the security console.
with the tools and then they go to the security console. So go to tech on users, the T01, 9, 10, 11, and 12 alone. So I'll now open up the ninth employee and now these are the passwords. Take on wizard passwords. And then I click on edit. And then you go on the narrative. <clears throat> so here, the node is place here. So we'll now add the roles of the operator. First, application implementation console. Application implementation. He is admin, actually, and SKM admin. Add role. The next one, ID security monitor. And it was employee. <clears throat> Supplier qualification. Uh, this is not the uh, this is the one. Fine. From here onwards, what happens? I will not look at this document. Supplier qualification is the one now. Thank you. So I will not take a copy of the supplier qualification. So supplier qualification is the way. So this facilitates mainly the admin, but uh, Sometimes what happens, by my responder and evaluator are also having a problem. So that's why what happens, I'm not giving all the roles to everybody, which is really not correct, actually. So if you go there, so yet I will now say supplier sales representative, and take out it. For the convenience sake, I will not put it over here. Supplier administrator. But every role has got a specific purpose, actually. And that has been explained in this document, but uh, I don't have the patience to go through it from the action. So let me go there and then I take copy of the supplier sales representative. Supplier sales representative. <clears throat> supplier administrator. That's it. All the roles are being given. So click on done. And then I give a second place. None of them needs a data access actually. Because on procurement side, no data access is required. Data access is required only for physical transactions actually. So this is not required. Hello, go to the 10th employee. <clears throat> he is going to be the responder actually. So 9th and 10th one is the responder. Research. You can add rules. So I will add application again. Supplier administrator. Now we are now completed. The responder's role actually will now go to the evaluator's role. Now set up the evaluator. So 11th employee is evaluator. It's really very tough actually. It is not at all easy. <clears throat>
Sales representative. Administrator. <clears throat> So this is on the evaluators. And finally, the approval. Because last time when I did certain things missing, we had some issues. I'm not remembering exactly. So it is always preferable, or rather, to test it. I am not doing it. Like that. I told the employee, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to go all the ways, even for the approval, right? Password doesn't match means what will be giving a problem actually. <clears throat> so click on add roles. So for the approver, we are now setting up everything. IT security man. Read the document fully, and that will give you a lot of idea about it. It has got even a lot of enhancements to be apart from my teaching, and that will now give you a lot of information. You can even download, try to download the latest white paper from the internet, actually, whether it's a very old one, actually. And that's it, fine, go that we are now given all the rules to even the approvers, actually. So click on second post. So we have now completed all the activities. And then we are going to make the uh, employees as what, as a procurement agent, actually. Fine. Otherwise, what happens, they will not be able to find. First to the employees, I'm not going to make it as a procurement agent. Because they are going to work on the system, actually. So procurement agent is a must, actually. So what was that up and make an answer? <clears throat> so Approver, procurement agent is not required. Click on plus. Ninth, tenth, and eleventh. I'm going to make it another procurement agent actually. So it is T01 is the business unit. So for which DMP uh, 9, comma, uh, T01 underscore 9th employee. Go there. The business unit and go there, give up full power. So he is admin actually. 
and then here i am not going to give what happens a full access so that what happens a, he will be able to access the calvin roth's supplier qualification actually so Cal calvin roth supplier qualification he can very well access and i am going to give a plug this is going to act very well for instance he has got a full access to the calvin roth's uh, supplier qualification we are going to take a copy from this and then do it okay? so we are now giving a full access to the man is supplied qualification actually. So that is going to be very effective. Actually. That is, a, this is all simulation only. So that is the reason that what happened in the The ninth employee is not made of the procurement agent. Tenth is uh, basically a responder. Fine. He must also be a procurement agent actually. So it's a T01 is the one. EMP 10, comma T01 underscore. <clears throat> BU. So he will also be having full access to everything. Other people's document. So you can seven close, no doubt. Then eleventh also, but twelfth is not required. Twelfth <coughs> is just approval only, so that is not required. Eleventh also will not make it there. So the T zero one. If I make a mistake, please correct me. So that what happens, I will not be landing up with a problem and I'm demonstrating it. Now. So it's a EMP 11, it's a uh, T01. So go there. It's a full access, full access, full access, full access. And that's it. So we are now given everything. I made them as a procurement agent. I written it like this, but uh, what happens? Uh, this is not exactly working for me. No. <laughs> <coughs> so make an R&D on the rules. Fine. And then which role has to be given to whom? So this is now copy. Configure requisitioning business functions. I must have to click on them. Now do the configure requisitioning business function. <coughs> so click on that. So do a search. Positioning business function. So, you know, drop down and you know, choose maybe you. P01 B. Thank you, Okay. So, the default uh, derivative organization is operations actually. So, drop it down and then choose it now. You can search. And then uh, name is operations is not coming actually fine. They they made a mistake actually. Fine. They have made it as item or fine. This is not at all correct actually. They should not make it as item or fine. Vision makes it as item or item org is only for CRM and not for your supply chain actually. Will not work at all. Fine. If you go to the SSP, if you don't put the master org, it will not work at all. Many things will not work at all. Probably. And I don't know why they are making it in the vision as item or. Will now convert that into an inventory org. So we'll search. Go there. So organization is what? Zero, zero, zero. So click on search. We'll now convert this into an inventory. Item org is mainly for CRM, remember. Fine. Do not make in the field also, do not make any org as an item org. Item management is not correct at all. Inventory management. So you're not going to convert into inventory management. So go there. So headquarters is okay. Fine. Business unit is what? I will not say manage business unit. <coughs> manage business unit. Uh, so here uh, I'm now going to use my BU now. Right? So any BU is okay because as long as the chart of accounts are same, so that's okay now. So for this exercise, I'm now making it as my BU. So management business unit. Legal entity is what I'm not going to come up with. Here's one legal entity. So in fact, what happens, it will be US one business unit, but I'm, since I'm doing it for my own, fine, it can be. Fine. Well, remember, the master can be shared across BUs, basically. Fine. It's very, very important. It can be shared across BUs. If the COA is same, if the COA is going to be same for the org, fine, whether, uh, the primary ledger, ledger has got a COA, fine. So in the, what's called your primary ledger, the, if the COA is going to be same across multiple org, it can be very well done. You'll be having normally one common COA. Fine. Multiple uh, COAs will be coming in a very like, complex implementation actually. So operations, operations is okay, fine. Is the definition or and go there. So schedule is also operations. I'll drop it down. I'm going to schedule as operations. Click on search. Remember, uh, the operation schedule will not work on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. 
because it's a US based one. And then if you're practicing it, you have to make every day as a working day for certain activities, not for everything. For certain activities, whatever, like shipping, if you want to do on operations, it will not be able to possible on Saturdays and Sundays. So you have to make every day as a working day, actually. On this one. So that is very important. So you know, always make what happens a manufacturing animal. Even though it's a master, it is a preferable to make it because later on you may not have to come over again. But right? once when the transaction starts, you cannot put the tick mark on also for manufacturing and maintenance. So that's it. Now it has been made as what as a as a what's called inventory or and not item or. So the one so you go that tick mark. No problem. Here we go there and then query for some O P E R E. If you query for it, it will be fine. It's fine. Zero 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 operation system. So here. So here, you will see the view over here. So uh, the, the shift to location is important. Of an analysis here. Seattle is the location that we want to ship it. <clears throat> so it's not coming. I will not put headquarters. No, right? Because the whole structure is not ready. So I'm not using headquarters. Even though you're not going to ship it together. Right? So I'm not making it to the headquarters. Right? And the structure is not fully made on the view. Fine. So I'm not making. I'm not made any child dog and all. Right? So I'm not making the shift location as headquarters. Right? So operations uh, location stuff. I'm making it. Because we are not going to physically transact anything, and so it's okay. In reality, it must be a real physical or so that's it. My configure requisitioning business function is now completed. Save and close. So what happened? Any errors came. Uh, save and close is not saving and closing now. Ah, cancel. No requery and then see no matter. Requery and then see whether everything is there. Sometimes what happens if it doesn't save, it will be giving a problem. No requery and save. <clears throat> oh God, it has not saved at all. What happened? <clears throat> Operations. Go there. And then here headquarters. I will not give a save now. I can save first of all. Now save. You can save. So save and close. It changes the same feature from here. Again, come back and then have a look at it. Sometimes what happens if something is not happening properly, you may requery and then see whether your activity is not got complete. Yes, it's got complete. And give a cancel. So do that and do And then so configure procurement business function for one. Okay. Procurement business function. So go to the configure for the one resolution for your view. Drop it down and then for your view again. So get on. This uh, the 000, zero will now act as an item validation or two by ten. Because of a view set, it is now coming fine. But they use one view set, you are not fine. That's why it's coming. So I'm not choose one thing for the right terms. Uh, buyer pays five. Right? FOB is always destination is the preferred one. Now. The supplier prefers one. And organization is what master operations. Line type is goods. <laughs> Currency is USD. <laughs> Language is only in English. Go down. Okay. Yep. Uh, again, uh, okay. There is no location at all coming up. Location is coming only on the configure uh, requisitioning business function. So I have now given a wrong location when uh, the master will not be shipping anything at all, but it is uh, preferable to have something right? because we are not going to ship anything at all in this place. And, uh, so no uh, physical activity, only supplier qualifications are only one you have to so, uh, so buyer also, what happens? They can even give the buyer actually. Right? Buyer is whatever EMP9, right? EMP9, command T01 underscore. If he's a SQM admin, I'm going to make him as a buyer actually. So SQM admin has been made as a buyer actually. So click on seven close by which the more completed. Ninth is an admin and then tenth is a responder. It's all done. Now here there are multiple lookups. Are there fine? I am unable to identify the other lookups. Fine. If you find out, please tell me. Fine. I will not go to the managed supplier type. Managed supplier type. Will not find the lookups. I will now say uh, T01 underscore uh, a supplier. <coughs> I will now say small supplier. <coughs> He's a small supplier. <coughs> so, 
<laughs> we have a what's called a, the display we have another this means this now so create that many supply types actually maybe what about the insurance agent it may be a manufacturing agent maybe a service organization fine depending upon uh, whatever your company feels accordingly whatever is uh, create that many lookups you may be a subcontractor you may be a contractor so depending upon that what happens you create the lookups actually so i'm making a small supply t0 one thing go that more so click on save and close by which this lookup is number <clears throat> then afterwards what about the business classification and business classification so click on plus i will now say it's a t01 is a woman one so i am now making a business classification what woman one again there are plenty of uh, business classifications there uh, fine uh, small business burden one the woman one and all so so uh, all these things you can even whichever is applicable uh, you create uh, that many over there any of this no fine go click on this the second lookup is normal then afterwards what happens uh, you go there go to the manage supply products and services category hierarchy paste it manage supply products and category hierarchy this is different from ssp hierarchy ssp has got a catalog category hierarchy and this is a different one find the root what happens i will now make a plus i will now say is the t01 computers So below the root, I am now making one. Click on seven plus. So we are now created one such error. So below which, what happens? We are now going to create two more. One. You keep your cursor on the T zero one. So click on plus one. I will now say T zero one. This top. That will be coming below the T zero one. And then keep your cursor on this, and then create one more thing as a map. My below computer is on that. You need to run this to the app. So click on seven. So we have now created a two such hierarchy of uh, what happens that your uh, uh, what's called your products and services. He may even give a AMC contract also. So we have to cross. You know how an AMC contract. Also. he provides this amc contract also so whatever the service suppliers are providing you have to create the complete hierarchy over here so create all the hierarchy whatever the supplier is providing so your suppliers may provide so many services basically fine so the products and services you have to create appropriate category and then keep it over here so that the supplier will be able to populate those things he can pick up while he is now registering in the system he will be able to use those things and click on that so there are some more lookups are there but i couldn't uh, identify the task name actually if i will not tell you where exactly is not fine so i am unable to identify the task name the manual also is not explaining the task name right so if you go there that panel is also not explaining it and so i am now stuck on this now what i am going to do is i am now going to pick up some nine ready made codes in the system now and then i will now copy it into mine actually and this one i will now copy to mine because the writing the codes is really very difficult actually Uh, so for the uh, training purposes, we'll be picking up the ready-made codes, and then I will now copy into mine. Now. So let us now log out of it. Now, click on done. Now, now log out of it, and then log in as admin. So as admin, as a SQM admin actually. Sign out. So click on done. <clears throat> we'll now log in as a SQM. T zero one plus four EMP nine. So click on. So now remember, T zero one and score EMP nine. So let me clear this. I go to the procurement, and then this comes as an icon actually. For SSP also, it is an icon, and then uh, uh, SSP it will now come as a catalog, and then uh, for the sourcing it will now come as what catalog actually. Fine. So uh, like this, what I want to be coming, and then for the supply qualification also is coming. Well, whereas for the contracts it will come as a separate tab region actually. Fine. The catalog. And then you are this thing are coming in. <coughs> so supply quality is also nice. Thank you. Now go there. So I am into my T zero one BU actually. Fine. This works on the T zero one BU. 
long over that point there will not click on it we are not going to begin the setup sir so we are going to give the manage questions sir so nine questions existing questions i am going to pick it up and then i am going to copy it to my next so the first question is what code of contact i want to copy it so manage questions i will not pick up the visions ready made one actually <coughs> so go on and query this question and click on search so you are searching for it the code of contact will be coming here Oh, sorry. I am not the owner of it now, right? so I have to remove the owner. I am not the owner. Calvin Roth is the owner. I click on search. So remove the thing and then make a search. And then, so if you click on it, what happens? You can now see that uh, Calvin Roth is the owner. So I cannot use it in my view at all. Fine. I must be the owner. Fine. Then only what happens? Uh, I will be able to use it. Fine. SQ admin has to be owner. Fine. The owner must belong to your view actually. This owner doesn't belong to T zero one business unit. So what happens? I cannot use it at all. The owner must belong to your view. Then only others can use it in your view. I will cancel. That. So go there. Like I will not. What I will select and then duplicate it. Actually. I can duplicate. I will not duplicate it. I will not duplicate it. Duplicate the question. There are nine questions which I am going to duplicate. Is a T zero one underscore paste. So automatically, I, my my name is coming as a one. It is in the status of a draft actually. So it is not saying what is the code of contact actually. Right? The ready-made question is what? Do you agree to the attached the supplier code of contact or something? So code of contact is there. So let me create one and then attach mine now. Thank you for that. No attachment. Okay. I'll go there. So I'll move to the back. Right. There's a code of contact. So all these things must be your own actually. So go to the PC and then I will now go there. So I will now go to this place. I will now say it is a T zero one code of contact action. So click on save. So let me do that into my note. So I will not delete it, and then I will now add my code of contact. So the code of contact you have to write it very properly. So it is what it is a two supplier actually, not internal. So click on plus. I will now choose my note. I will now I will now choose T zero one. Code of conduct. I'm going to say T01 code of conduct. So this is now attached. So my code of conduct is attached. Fine. Do you agree to the attached supplier code of conduct or anything? So the answers are what yes and then no. So yes is a uh, response attachment is required. If he says yes, no, fine. He has to the the star indicate that what about there is a preferred one now. Fine. Is a preferred one. We expect a yes now. So if he says yes, he has to attach uh, his uh, uh, document actually. How he is going to uh, whatever is oblige on the code of conduct of a person. No means what nothing. So accept. So this is the accepted response yes and no. So give a save and close by which what about save and then activate it. So we are now changing the code of conduct to ours now and not an activity. Write in the code of conduct. You have to talk to your uh, what about your team now. Actually. Uh, the procurement managers will be able to write what is the code of conduct expected from supplier actually, and right? they will be writing this document. So there's no active now. I click on save and close. So my first question is ready. Now go for the second question. Now go for the second question. <clears throat> second question is what compliance review? Take over it. Compliance review. So go on and query. Compliance review. Click on search. Select the duplicate. Compliance review. I'm duplicating it. So go there. So T zero one underscore compliance review. So I'm the owner of it. The response is required from him. Allow comments from response was. Response is required. So must actually. So question type is what? Multiple choice with single selection actually. Response type is internal. So this will not go into the suppliers one. Right? Now our internal responder is going to respond back. Fine. Supplier will not be getting this at all. This question, the supplier will not get. Only our internal responder will be getting it. So response step is internal. So please select the overall result of the compliance evaluation under audit of the supplier actually. Attach your compliance report as a, as a supporting document. So attachment is a must actually. So he says what? He is fully compliant. He has to attach a document. And then compliance with exception also he has attached it. And then out of compliance also he has attached it. So our internal responder is going to give this. Compliance. This question will not go to the supplier. So everything is okay, fine. Go that tomorrow. So it's all okay, fine. We'll now save and then activate it. 
So the compliance review is by the internal responder, actually, not by the supplier. It is for responsibility is internal. So click on it. So he has to attach a yeah, appropriate document about how he is saying as a fully compliant or a compliant with exceptions or whatever it is. He has to give an attachment. Actually. So go that click on it. So it is not enough. I give a seven close by which what happens. Our second question is ready. Actually. It is in fact really very tough actually. Fine. You have to be an expert on that, what happens uh, on the supply qualification. Otherwise, you will be finding it very difficult. And disclose fin info. So next is what? Disclose fin info. I get my search. So go there. Select and then click on duplicate. And duplicate. Disclose fin info. T01 underscore and then disclose fin info. So you are Are you willing to provide a copy of the audited financial statement under non disclosure agreement? If NDA is, is in already in place, please attach your financial statements. So this is a question we are putting it to them now. So go that. A hint is what if an NDA is required, uh, if an NDA is required, we will contact you. Fine. If you want an NDA, we will contact There's a hint actually. So he is going to provide, this is basically for supplier only. Supplier is not going to provide disclose financial information. So he's going to yes no. So attachment is optional. If you want, you can attach it. Otherwise, whatever you prefer is yes actually. Preferred is yes. Fine. Attachment is optional. Whereas in the compliance, attachment is a mandatory one. Attachment is an option. And then in the minimum, in the code of conduct also, what happens if he says yes, he has to attach. That is a mandatory one. So acceptable response is what yes and no. So go there, click on save and then activate. So click on activate. So we are activating it. So by which the third question is ready. Now go to the fourth one. Or you a public company. We're asking you a question about or your public company, thank you, search. <clears throat> so go there, so go there, select and then duplicate it. So go there, so T01, or your public company. This is our year, the owner of the company. Response is required actually, right? You, you need to, is your company a public company? Right. So he has to respond, right? there's a mandatory one. Right? Public company response is required. So yes and no. So if he is saying no, what happens? It gets branched to this. Thing. If he is not a public company, there is a question branching. If you click on it, what happens? There is a branching of the question. And you must enter the question attribute. So it branches to what you have to disclose the financial info. Financial info is a must actually. So, the must. so if he says no, what happens? It gets branched into another question. Actually. So it's okay. So is a public company, yes or no, yes. So is a response is required actually. So click on save and activate. And public company is on. Give a save and click on activate. <coughs> <coughs> Before which, what happens? We will not change the question branching. And click on it. We will not change it to our branching. So this is one. So we are going to make a change now. How to edit this now? Yeah. I have to edit this. Okay, fine. I will not. I should go to the edit mode. <coughs> I have to change it to mine now. So. so go to the edit mode. Edit question branching, and then let me edit the branching. Mode. Aid the branching and go that one. I will now go there. Display sequence is there now. Find the actions. What happens? Uh, select an add. I click on select an add. So I'm going to add it. It's a T01. I click on search now. I will now go for the financial info. So where is my financial info? It is not there or is there? Disclose financial info. So click on apply and T01. So I have not changed it actually. Oh God, I have done it in the other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh God, I made a mistake. I know. I will not give a cancel. I have to keep it in the appropriate place. Now do it. So go there, click on it. I will know what happens. A query for the T01. Fine. Whether I have now saved it or not, I'm not sure about it. That's the way what happens. Uh, working is uh, very, very proper. In T01. I will not see whether the public company has been saved or not. Fine. Public company is already saved. I'm not hearing it. So everything is okay. So in this place, I have to edit. I have now kept my custom on the above and then keep your custom on the 20th one and then I click on edit. <coughs> you will already be having an fine disclose final. So let me delete it. So let me delete it. And then add mine. So click on actions and then go to select and, add, and then let me add it. So go to the T01. I will now ask him to disclose my financial. So click on it. So that's it. I know that. So if he says no means what? He has to say the financial information. If his company says yes, it's okay. If he says it's not a public company, he has to disclose the financial information. The previous one is there. So click on whatever uh, save and then activate it. Save and activate. 
So on the public info, what I was, uh, there is a public company, there is a branching of the Kusnet. So go there, click on what uh, it is active already. So you will get one, click on save and close. So this is also copy. So all are active. Right? You make a search now, it will not become active. So all are active. So four questions, one, two, three, four, four questions are copied. You now go to the fifth one, employee count. Uh, we might expand it and then query for the employee count. So click on search. Select and then click on duplicate. Employee count and duplicate. So it's a T01 underscore employee count. You know that. How many employees are there in your company? And there are multiple answers there. And it's okay. But you can leave it as a kind of uh, There is no uh, real attachment or anything. Like that. So yet uh, response is required by you know, the employee count. The response is required. Multiple choice with a single selection. So you can choose only one of them. Actually. So, that. so click on save and then activate. So we are activating it. So click on save and close. So go like that. Then CFY revenue. CFY revenue. Select and duplicate it. T01 underscore CFI revenue. So here, what I was at, estimate your expected revenue for the current financial year. So this is the one now. So estimate the, uh, the question text actually. So it is mapped to your supplier attribute actually. Here, what happens is not. So current financial fiscal year's uh, potential actually. So current uh, fiscal year's potential revenue. And click on it. So it is now sub match to supply entry and click on search now. So the one. So here this profile is having a numeric value. So you have to say 10 or 20 or 30 or 40, fine, not lakhs. 10 lakhs is not accepted. Only 10, 20, 30, 40 is accepted. But I don't know how to set up this now. Fine, this profile. See, there are plenty of profiles are there, out of which what happens? I'm able to see only three profiles actually. So how to do this now? Fine. There may be somewhere I can do it now. Fine. I'm unable to find out the other profiles actually. So I, uh, where exactly we have to set up, fine. Uh, we have to understand it, no, fine. Uh, maybe, see this, I have created it, fine, T01. So supply profile attribute, T01, woman owned, I have created it. So, uh, maybe uh, under the suppliers one, it is now coming up automatically. And the supplier profile attribute, fine. It is now coming automatically. The category is called corporate profile, it is now saying. So business classification, I have done it now. Fine. The business classification, I have now made what? One uh, T0101. On the corporate profile, I am unable to find out. Fine. Business classification, I could find out the task name. I couldn't find out the task name for corporate profile. Income tax. Fine. And similarly, what happens is some more also. Fine. Products and services, I did. In the products and services, I made one. In the products and services, I made T01 computers actually. Uh, it is not coming here now. Fine. Uh, but uh, uh, that is not going to be affecting, so it's not coming. Fine. Products and services able to additional information. I am unable to find. There are so many things which I am unable to find out the category actually. Business classification I did, it, and then I did for what happens you are this thing also. Fine. Uh, on the products and services also I did. But, uh, for the remaining, fine. If you find it out, please tell me now. Cancel. So this particular attribute needs only a response as what uh, as a uh, digits basically. Fine. That is how it has been configured actually. Estimated your expected revenue for the current financial year. So this is what I was trying to do. The response, the attachment is optional actually. Fine. A question text is what? Text entry box now. Fine. There's only a text entry box, but it doesn't accept lakhs also. Fine. Response type is number actually. So this is the number 10, 20, 30, 40, only you've done, and then it will not be accepting. Fine. That has been configured on this particular one now. Fine. So you must understand about how to set up this now. Fine. So if you know the supply profile attribute, I searched everywhere, the document is not giving me this supply profile attributes at all. And there's no task available for me now. So find it out. And then if you please educate me also on how to find it out. Actually. So click on save now. I'm now activating it. So the CFI revenue, I'm activating. Click on it. They're activating. Also. So you know, going to expect in number 10, 20, 30, 40. So click on it. So now activate it and click on save and close. So this is also completed. So go there. So if you go and then query on the T01, fine. And then uh, click on OK, fine. Click on search. You will not find all things. Three plus three. Six are now completed. The logo is in the seventh one. So ISO certification. 
and go to the search and then query for the ISO certification. Accepted by search. I will not duplicate it. Click on duplicate. We are going to duplicate it actually. <clears throat> so go there. It is a T01 underscore and then paste it over here. ISO certification. So the one which is coming up. Does your organization has got ISO certification? Both of them? If yes, please attach your certificate actually. Fine. If it is there, what happens there? It is a must actually. Fine. Yes, attach it. Yes means what? So 100% means what? Uh, if you saying is ISO fully compliant, he has to attach a certificate actually. Right. Certificate has to. In process, is no is okay. In class and okay, fine, there's no difference, but, uh, but for this, what happens is long way. And then it will be having a scoring of two. See, I uh, allow what happens, the response required, and then it will have whatever the scoring is automatic. Actually. So, what I am going to do is I'm not going to create a supplier, and then I'm not going to say as an in process activity. So, no uh, response is required, but the scoring is what 25 percent. The scoring is 25 percent. I will not tell you about what exactly it means. So, it has got a scoring actually. Right? ISO, what happens? The 14,001 has got a scoring. Scoring is automatic. So once the supplier has in process, he will be getting 25% marks of the weightage. On the weightage, he will be getting only 25% of the marks. 25% of the marks. So go back to one. So we are not leaving the other things. Okay, fine. There is no attachment actually. Fine. There is no need to change. I will not give a save and then activate. So ISO certification has got a what's called a scoring action. So click on save and close. We don't see whether CFI revenue is now having any scoring or not. I'm not remembering it actually. CFI revenue. Do not have any CFI revenue. If you go on and click on it, the scoring is none actually. So ISO certification has got a scoring. I'm go to the next one. So I'll go to the force sustainability. So IFO certification has got a scoring, and then there is an automatic scoring actually. There is no manual scoring, there is an automatic scoring. So no query for the scope, sustainability is stopped on that. So there's the one, fine, select it and then duplicate it. Fine, we're duplicating it actually. Go there. So T01 underscore and paste it. So this is also automatic, fine. So the previous one is also automatic and then here also is automatic actually. Is your company recognized by Forbes in the current list of most sustainable company? So yes, uh, response is not allowed, fine. You only have to say yes or no actually. So this has got a scoring. Well, yes means what? 100% scoring and then no is no zero scoring. So when I'm doing it, I will be giving what happens a, a, a scoring of 100 factor. So once when the supplier chooses yes, he'll be getting 100% mark of the weightage. In the previous one, I'm going to give a 25% uh, the in process. So you'll be getting a 25% marks on the total weightage. So here, what happens is no given this one. So here, I'm not going to give only yes, no, fine. So you'll be getting 100% marks. Now. So go click on save and then activate. So they're going to activate it. So Forbes sustainability is automatic fine for the same and close. Remember. So if you go on and query the T01. So in the CFA revenue, uh, what happened? This is an automatic one, huh? and CFA revenue is an automatic one. Yeah, no, 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 no. What are the other one? Huh? What of contract compliance from the public company and ISO certification? So in the ISO certification, what happens if you says uh, in process, in the ISO certification, I'm going to give in process, it will be having a 25% marks. So, so ISO certification is automatic. And then afterwards, force sustainability, I'm going to give it one. Okay? The force sustainability, I'm going to give yes, no, fine, you'll be getting 100% marks. So on ISO certification, you'll get only 25% of the marks. And then here, you'll be getting 100% marks. You now go for the next one, office recycling. Office recycling. Wait for it. Office recycling is the one. Thank you. I'm searching. We're going to go there. Fine, click on it. So click on edit now. <clears throat> okay. So it's a T01. Let's go. I don't know. Office read again. Fine. It also is automatic. So the ISO certification and then the Forbes and sustainability and then office recycling, everything has got a scoring actually. All the three are having a scoring actually. Go there. Come on. So he is saying that what is obvious, what percentage of office uh, comprehensive employee based recycling? Here also I'm going to give 100 percent actually so that you will not get full marks for this. Will get full marks for this. So office recycling, I will give 100 percent marks, and then the other one also. Only ISO certification, I will now give in process actually. Not a lot. So it's okay, fine. That. So click on save and then activate. So there are three automatic scoring activity are there now. Click on activate. So click on save and close. So while the supplier is going to respond back on this now, and ISO certification, he will be responding as in process. Here you will now give a yes now for 100 percent, and then here also whatever they will now give full, full marks to you. 
So these two things you will get one marks. But here you will be getting only twenty five percent of the marks based upon which the certificates will be issued to him. We are going to give you a certificate basically based upon these three automatic scoring. We may even have multiple automatic scoring also. So this completes what happens. All the questions are to be duplicated. Actually, we'll go that kind of part. We'll now go for query fourteen zero one. We'll now see whether we are the one or not. EMP nine. Then I put three zero one and because such we'll now see whether all the nine are coming here. So one two three four five six seven eight nine. We will not have a small break, and then we will not begin the next activity. Also, okay. We now completed all the questions. No, fine. Uh, simulating all the questions. Go that one. We will now go to the qualification areas. The qualification area will not contain multiple questions. We will now go to the manage qualification area. So manage qualification area. The next setup actually after the question area is completed, we will now go to the manage qualification areas. No, this is not. We will not take up. What happens? The environmental sustainability is a QA. So this QA, we are going to see it now. Find the qualification area. Uh, uh, no query for it now. Find. So click on search now. We'll be getting it now. <coughs> Why nothing is coming? <coughs> okay, I am not the owner. I am not the owner. So make the owner as a blank and then fill. We're getting it. We'll not duplicate it first. So click on duplicate. Duplicate it. Now uh, we have to have the owning BU, and then afterwards the do default owner, and then the owner actually. So remove these two things now. Fine. Remove these two things. So the default owner is also I'm removing it. Roth Calvin is coming. It belongs to him now. Fine. I will not put my BU over here. Then afterwards I will not put the owner. Put the BU over here, and then I will not put the owner. Now. EMP nine is the owner actually. So put the BU first of all. And then I put the owner here, and then put the default owner also. In reality, you will be uh, you will be filling up everything. There will not be anything at all in the field actually. So normally, a QA expires over a period actually. A qualification area he has to get requalified again and again actually. So it will be expiring in thirty days actually. So it will be expiring. So normally, what happens? The scoring and automation fine automatically populate the responses, automatically accept the responses, enable scoring fine. All of them will be normally <coughs> enabled. <coughs> it's all enabled. <coughs> so go to the next area. Fine. I will not put this one. Fine. So T zero one underscore is called environmental sustainability. It is environmental sustainability. It is a green initiative. There is a description on this. So it expires every thirty days, or every one eighty days, or every three sixty days. You have to renew it. Actually, when the qualification area gets expired, actually, and this has to be renewed every every thirty days. Expiration will be there. So go to the next area. Find the one. In the environmental sustainability, what are the questions which are getting added? One is the ISO ISO certification, four percent of the other thing. Remember, all the three are having what happens? You are automatic scoring actually. So let me go there and then add mine. No, find the one. Let me add it. So T zero one. I will not choose what our ISO certification. I will not choose the ISO certification. I am just going to apply this one. I am not going to give what I was scoring now. Fine, seventy percent scoring. I am going to give seventy percent scoring. We can even have a knockout score and all. I am not using it. That is the lab access for you. So I will not remove it. I am not exactly following only what is there in the machine. I will not remove it. So click on delete. So I added my T zero one. Certification. Remember, if I use this one, it will not work at all because I am not the owner of it. No, fine. I am not the owner of it. It will not work at all. So you have to have the appropriate one. Fine. It has got a seventy percent marks. I am not going to give what one the in process. No, in process is only twenty five percent of the seventy percent marks will be getting. So you will not get only twenty five percent. So go there. I will not add the force sustainability. Let me add the force sustainability. Go there. T zero one. And I am entering. No, fine. I will not add the force sustainability. So go that one. This is also having an automatic scoring. So, you know. so the force sustainability for mine is added. I will not delete the missions one. Delete. Remove it. So it is having a twenty percent scoring. Weightage is twenty percent. And the office recycling is also automatic. All the three are having an automatic scoring. I go that one. I will not add mine. Let me plus one. Let me add. Mine. So T zero one. So go there. So we're going to add it. Office recycling. So choose it. 
அதனால் கிளிக் ஆன் அப்ளை அண்ட் கிளிக் ஆன் அப்ளை இட் இஸ் நாட் டன் கிளிக் ஆன் அப்ளை ஆஃபீஸ் ரிசெக்டிங் இல்லை ஸோ லெட் மி ரிமூவ் த மிஷன்ஸ் ஒன் கிளிக் ஆன் ஐ பி மிஷின் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஹேவிங் டென் பர்சன்ட் ஸ்கோல் and then knock out is a lab exercise for it if you get it will get automatically knocked out so here what i'm going to do is i will now use a calculator in the iso certification i'm going to give a in process now in process is nothing but what 25 uh, uh, what am i saying it's a 0.25 fine 0.25 fine multiplied by 70 so you will now get a 17.5 score actually so plus you will now get a 20 marks plus you will not get a 10 marks so equal to how much you will not get 47.5 so if the supplier is not going to answer on the isc certification in process and then force sustainability is yes and then office recycle is 100% you will not get a 47.5 score now. so based upon which the outcome will be automatically chosen now. fine if it is 85 to 100 what happens it will be excellent now. 60 to 84 what happens is above average fine 41 to 59 fine it is 47.5 something so you will be getting an average rating actually for his answer of yes here and then uh, here 100 per yes and then here 100 percent if he answers uh, in process and then yes and s it is approximately 47.5 and then the system will now give a average rating to him now on this qa on this qa he will not get an average rating so he can even configure this option i'm not using the vision zone straight away so on this qa every qa will have an outcome actually right the qualification area will be having an outcome every qa will be having an outcome so based upon the questions and then based upon the scoring and other things so whatever that there will be an outcome actually. so the outcome is what this one so it is a automatic outcome but here nobody no responder is not going to act on it the internal responder will not act on it so as and when he selects these three answers now fine he gets an outcome automatically on this one on this qa of what your uh, uh, environmental sustainability will be automatic also normally environmental sustainability automatic because here uh, it is a basically for a green initiative and so internal responders are not normally allowed to make an evaluation also. so based upon the supplies response the uh, environmental sustainability will always be automatic in every company also. so go there so you will be getting an average rating for his selection of in process is a yes and then it is 100% actually so is what else and go there so click on save So we can these things now. So the one. So on the environmental sustainability, you will be getting an average rating once when he chooses those things. So it is automatic outcome. The outcome of this environmental sustainability is automatic. And I will not activate it. Click on it. It is a really tough one now. Fine, you have to do a lot. Fine, see, we are now copying from Vision and then doing it now. In reality, you have to write everything <laughs> based upon your industry. You have to write your questions, your qualification areas, and then models. Everything you have to write. Now. next is what financial viability you know go and query the next qa is the financial viability so click on search now and you query for the financial viability so click on search and you go to query for the financial viability so is not coming fine so like it and then click on duplicate that is the one in view and that point so is what t01 so financial viability so financial stability information including including size and then the credit ratings etc So both are clear. So all these things are there. Nothing. So always, what happens? They remove the owner and then afterwards so put your BU and then uh, remove the owners first of all. Remove the owners here. Default owner and then owner you do it. And then afterwards populate your BU and then what happens? You do this. Nothing. In reality, what happens? Everything will be blank actually when you're doing it. So since we are copying it from this one, the Calvin Roth is coming as the owner. But afterwards, after you putting the procurement BU, what happens? You go there and then populate your owner. So for the EMP name. And here also, what happens is a EMP nine for the default one. I don't know what the difference between owner and default one. So it is a financial viability. It is the automatically populated responses actually. My responses will be automatically populated from that one. So go there, click on it. So I go there, click on it, and then go to the next one. This is all visions one now. <coughs> In the employee count, he is going to what happens a response now. So we need all these things. But what happens? I will not not take all the five actually. Fine, I will not take only one or two. Two, I will not take it. Fine, all the five. And remember, this outcome is now manual. The internal responder is now going to give an output. Fine, there is no automatic response at all. Fine. So here, nothing is having a scoring at all. Nothing is having a scoring at all. So the internal responder is now going to what happens? Uh, give a outcome as excellent or average or average. Only for environmental visibility, viability, 
that is uh, by the government uh, uh, restriction what happens it is always automatic environmental liability is always automatic actually because government says that if the supplier do not correspond automatically what happens they give appropriate rating only automatically so there only it will be automatic whereas for the other ones internal response is going to count so i will not put the employee count of mine now thank you for that not the employee count of mine thank you for plus one i will go that t01 and then click on search so i will not put the employee count employee count so click on apply and then click on the employee count here right and then i will not add cfa revenue also I click on plus only two i am going to keep it so t01 so tfi revenue will be in lakhs actually it has to be entered only as a new as a number actually csa revenue you cannot enter it as a lakhs then lakhs is not acceptable fine it is a number actually but how to what happens the configure the attribute i don't know fine somebody please uh, try to find out moment so the remaining let me delete so let me delete employee count and then delete it <coughs> there is csa revenue and then delete it. so there are three such attributes which i don't know how to where is the task name If I know the task name, I can do it. No fine. The task name is not visible at all anywhere. I have to read the full uh, what happens the documentation on supplier qualification. Actually, I don't have the patience actually. So somebody please read it and then find out the task name of all the remaining attributes actually, because they may be required actually. We need it. So go that moment. Public company. I will not select. I will delete it. The credit score also. Only I am going to have only two. So based upon the response of the supplier on the employee count and CFA, you know. the responder internal responder is going to give a what happens outcome now fine so this is a manual outcome which has been given by the internal responder normally what happens only lesser priority ones will be given to the internal responder fine not everything <coughs> the previous one is a very high priority and then that is always automatic actually so you'll be getting an average score there and then here he is not going to give a score so uh, if, if he is giving a poor score what happens the sql admin will now eliminate him from sourcing actually the sp admin will now say this this supplier is not eligible for sourcing at all <coughs> so that the procurement uh, uh, manager will never what happens is send any sourcing document rfq or rfi or two stage rfq or whatever it is you will not send to the supplier at all if it is going to be poor so this will be again evaluated by the sql admin actually so the responder is now saying poor means what the sql admin has to again see and then evaluate it actually <coughs> the final assessment will be done only with the sql admin So go there. So I'm not giving this thing. Thank you. I'm not making this ten. No. Oh God! I didn't save it at all. It is gone. <laughs> That is why what happens? You have to save it frequently. Otherwise, what happens? If you lose this screen, has got lost actually. Okay. So go there. Could the manager qualification yes? Let me know. Read only. And you have to save it frequently. Financial viability. Let me go there. Let me query for it. So you now see whether T zero one. I have now saved it or not. I am not sure about it. The qualification. Thank you, Mr. Swami. Let me see. Only environmental sustainability is only there. Nothing else is there. And nothing. Else. So I have to save it frequently. Actually, as I am going to do it, what am I going to save it? I don't know how it lost. Thank you, lost. So click on search. Financial viability. Financial liability. What happens? Oh, I am not the owner. Remove the owner and then make search. Select it. And then the owner you will be you. Fine, go there. When I duplicate it, I will be I will be the owner. I can even query from some other BU and then duplicate it. Actually, I am not querying it from some other BU. Fine, go there. Remember, all the BUs must have the same chart of accounts. And that is very very important. Otherwise, they will not be interchangeable. Actually, now remove it. Put space. And here also, what happens? It is preferable to remove it and then do it. Nothing. I don't do it. TMP nine. Preferably, and then afterwards you do it. So let me save it actually. And then when I do it, what happens? I must save. I keep on saving. So financial visibility in a draft mode, I must save it. I will go to this area, and then I will now add two of them. My employee count, I will now add. One click on plus. Let me add the employee count. Easy to do. Entering. So employee count, I am adding. So click on apply and then click on apply. and then uh, click on plus one. Right? The CFA revenue T zero one entering. I will not put the CFA revenue. The remaining I will not put. Since it is manual, I don't need so many things. So delete it and then uh, delete that one also. 
always have your own uh, questions now basically fine not other bus questions other bus questions will not work at all in your bu actually so i got two questions out of which one of the internal response was going to give an evaluation of what either excellent or above average or average or i will not say uh, it is a t01 underscore excellent i will add my own way of doing it you can even have your naming basically fine your naming can be given for this Underscore. So, <clears throat> so click on save and then activate it actually. So click on activate. It's an activate save and close. The other one also, I will not put my name over here now. So T01 and then click on search. So here on this one, environmental sustainability, I will not hit it. Since the supplier is not going to answer like this now, go to the place now. You're going to answer what? In process and then yes and then full 100%. So you'll be getting a 47.5 for which what happens, the average rating is there. So on the average, I will now put my average. This is the average rating you'll be getting. It. So his ranging is now going from 41 to 41 to 59. 47.5 is the one. So for which you'll be getting 41 T01 average. And so click on save and close. The two, two areas are now given. Environmental sustainability as well as financial ability. You are about to create a new qualification area revision now. Fine. The revision is getting updated. Fine. So activate the revision process. First of all, when you make a change, it becomes a revision actually. <coughs> Your changes are the same. So if you see what happens, if you make a search now, fine. No, no, the revision number will be changed actually. Keep on searching. So yours is revision one. The system will automatically use the latest revision only. Fine. The previous revisions are dishonored actually. Fine. It will not be used at all. Like in provision. In this thing also, the latest change order will be used for your activities. And so here also, the latest revision will be used for your activities. <coughs> and remember, every qualification will be having an outcome. The first one is having an automatic outcome. The second one is a manual outcome by the responder. The internal responder is not going to manually give outcome on the financial viability. Next is what compliance. I'm going to go to the compliance. We're not going to make a search for the compliance. So click on search. Okay, so. so the US one compliance, I won't use it now. So click on it, I will not duplicate it. And click on duplicate. So first thing is what you remove the default owner, and then this owner also you remove it. And then afterwards you put the procurement view and then put the owner in here. The EMP9. And then go there. It is a EMP9. So it is now given now. So it's all there. So give a save. Fine. Sometimes what happens, you must enter the value. Fine. T01 underscore. Fine. It is a compliance option. Give a save. So go to this area and then here the compliance. So the compliance is also what? He is now going to give a manual value. And code of conduct, let me add my Code of conduct has got some attachment. Some some of them are having an attachment. Of mine. So if he says yes, then he has to what happens? He has to give an attachment also. Just attachment. Click on apply. <coughs> so code of conduct is now there. And similarly, compliance review also. Compliance review is internal. Remember. So this QA has got two things. This is by the supplier, and then this is by the internal responder. This is by the internal responder. Compliance review by the internal respondent. Compliance review will be done by the internal respondent. So click on apply. And click on apply. And then remove the other one. So delete it. So we have got these two things. Code of conduct also not removed. So and then click on delete. So this I will be changing it as what ten now. I will be changing it to what twenty. And that's it. So here, uh, con the code of conduct is given by the supplier, and then compliance review is internal now. Fine. Based upon these two things, whether he is fully compliant or compliant with exceptions or out of compliance, will be given by the internal responder. So he will be giving what he will evaluate the compliance. The question, this is a question. First of all, the internal responder is going to answer, and then next is what the QA also is going to answer. So here in this place. Uh, the internal responder has got two activities to do one on responding to the internal question and then one on responding to the QA. Now. 
the QA also included as well. So he has got two QAs to respond. One is a compliance question answer, and the next is what the financial viability. So two QAs he is going to he is going to give outcome actually, and then on uh, one question he is going to respond. So click on save. And any doubts he asked me then there is a very very tough one. No? And my application error occurred. Oh God, what is this? No? So click on save. What happened? So go to this place. <clears throat> I will not try to activate it. No, click on activate. No, see whether it will. An application error occurred. Oh, save and close. None come out of it. No, I will not do it. I can see the same query. No. I done it. So I will not go and query for the B zero one. Compliance. It is not some problem. Select it. Yes. And then click on edit. Me. It is in a draft stage only. And go to this place now. Click on it. So employees are okay. I know that click on up to that. Yeah, save it actually. Will add it. I will not add it. Click on plus now. And code of contact. I will add it. So T zero one. Try and enter my code of contact. Code of contact has got an attachment also for the supplier. Supplier has to give attachment. Click on it. And then let me save it. Save it. Now save. Go there. Delete the code of contact. That is not a thing. You just save. I will not save the compliance review. So compliance review will be given by the what happened? The internal response. Right? So T zero one entering. So it's a compliance review. So click on apply. Click on okay. And then I give a save. But this one I will not delete. So click on save. So this is going to be code of contact is going to be ten now, and then here is going to be what twenty. So click on save. Not to be any problem. So the code of contact will be uh, responded by the supplier. And then, so the internal responder will be first of all evaluating the question of compliance review, and then he will now evaluate two QA areas. Two QA areas is going to give out too much. So click on activate. No activating. Oh God! I have saved everything now. Let's just play this and click on activate it. It does not become active. Fine. Save and close. Will now open it up and then see this now. Fine. We are giving some problem now. So we we'll make a search one. I will not click on what go there. So click on search. T zero one. I am searching it. We we'll open the compliance and make a look at it. Go there. The EMP one, EMP two, and that one. And then go to this place. <coughs> In this questionary and T zero one code of contact is that T zero one compliance review. So here also what happens? I will not change it. What is a T zero one underscore T zero one underscore the T zero one. Whether I have given everywhere my number or not, I am not sure about it. We will see. So activate. And now you are creating a new revision. And so click on activate. So a new revision is now getting created. Click on save and close. So for two of them, what happens? We have a new revision actually. So both the compliance as well as the amount of the compliance got a new revision actually. And here I have not given it to my, I have not given the T zero one actually. So I have not given it. So <clears throat> I will not give it also. So let us now have our own outcome will be our own. So go to this place. We will now have the outcome as our own. Oh, is already given. So we already given. So we have the latest revision to be done. So we have now created three qualification areas. Out of which, what happens? Uh, one of them is automatic actually. Fine. So environmental sustainability is automatic. The remaining two, the what's called the uh, responder, internal responder is going to give outcome actually. Fine outcome. In one of them, what happens? One qualification question is going to answer, and then afterwards, what happens? He will be giving uh, outcome for two of the QAs. Two of the QAs. So we have completed configuring our uh, what's called your. Uh, What's called your qualification areas. Now we will now go to the model. So I will now pick up the model. Now go and pick up the model. Now go that one. There's the third setup. So after having so a questions will be created. Qualification area will be contained in the questions, and then the model will be having qualification areas. The model will have QAs because it's a hierarchy. Models, QAs, and questions is the hierarchy. 
you click on the manage qualification models let me go to the existing one writing your own is very very difficult actually right? so that is why we are now copying it from vision and then doing it for demonstration purposes this is the best way click on search <clears throat> so select it and then here what happens you go there so click on duplicate is a compliance for sourcing eligibility actually is a compliance for sourcing eligibility is a model name actually t01 underscore and then paste it over here so again what happens remove the owner name and then you put your bu over here now from the beginning and then afterwards you put the owner bmt9 is the owner actually is a bmp9 fine so it is a compliance for sourcing eligibility so this will be done by the sk but be the qas will be given outcome by the responder whereas the model will be given by the sqm admin actually sqm admin is going to give an output so go that one so we're not going to that one so this is the one so the qm the sqm admin will be uh, giving this uh, outcome of the model actually model outcome will be given by this so go to this place thank you connect so here uh, he has got one qualification here as compliance now find one compliance so go that i will not add my now thank you connect So more that I will mean, query for the different T zero one. I'm going to click on search. So T zero one compliance. So this compliance has been given by your uh, what's called your uh, give us save now the stage. So give us save. This will be given by the internal responder actually. Go that he is now going to see the output of it. So click on. It. So he is not seeing the other two QA output actually. Other two QA outputs he is not going to do. So he will now look at it. the compliance only is important right? depending upon whatever you want you add add it. so in this one the model has got only one qa for the sql uh, admins evaluation you may even add more also so based upon all these things he is now going to give a rating right? so it is a t01 and a five star or the range of four star like that one and then like that problem i'm going to let some some ones so uh, so avoid do not use means what he will not be eligible find sourcing he will not be eligible if you use the avoid do not use means what the particular supplier will not be eligible for sourcing at all <clears throat> if he is given two star or one star whenever whatever it will be giving a warning whenever the procurement manager is now going to use this supplier for sending a rfq or a, a two stage rfq or auction it will now give a warning are ar this guy is only two star or one star fine do you still want to use like that a warning will be coming and if he has given this one it will not even come in the list of values for the procurement manager at all. so the outcome is always for sourcing actually the outcome is always for sourcing so this model outcome will be given by your sqm admin actually and then here in this example they have taken only one qa but they may even take multiple qas also so each and every qa you will not have a look at it so one is what the environmental sustainability is automatically reviewed by the system actually and then he will now see the internal responders response actually on the complaints and then based upon those two outputs he will now give outcome of this one. the sqm admin is now going to give the outcome so models outcome is ultimate actually whereas the qas admin will be given to the sql admin for his is further activity further evaluation fine the qa admins one so the qas admin qas output uh, given by the internal responders or automatic will be coming to the sqm admin sqm admin will now see all those things and then finally he will now give a qualification model outcome the model outcome will be given by the sql admin so give us save now thank you that So we won't go there. Go to the main area. Thank you. That so we are not making it. the T zero one compliance has been added. Thank you for that. I hope that everywhere I have put the QA is only T zero one. Thank you for that. So click on activate now. So it is now active. Thank you. Give us save and close. Maybe check what happens. Everything is now completed. The changes are seen. So the model is now ready. And then the final setup is now going to begin now. <coughs> the final setup. Thank you for that. Now we are getting the model now. Uh, we will now go to the final setup. So it is the rule set we are doing. So go to the manage rule set. So what I will do is I will now uh, open up the visions one and then I will now clearly see it. Come on, have a look. Please. Ah, I will now open up the visions one. So go there. I will now open up the visions one. And PRC ten is a US one business unit actually. The other browser I'm opening it up. 
I will now have a look at the what's called Vision's rule set actually. I click on the home icon. So here I will now go to the procurement. Then there, what happens? I will now go to what the supplier qualification. I click on the supplier qualification. So click on it. Go there. So here, what am I? I'll go to the manage rule set. I'll go to the manage rule set. So in the rule set, we have an SR one. SR one. So rule set is there. I will now click on it. I will now make a replica of it exactly. Uh, Say so rule set will be having an association to multiple procurement business units. So it will be having a multiple. So in our case, I'm going to have only one BU you now. Right? So you may even associate multiple BUs with one uh, rule set actually. And multiple views can be associated with so go there. So we'll now go there and then we'll now create a rule set. So let us now create a rule set. <coughs> so that rule set will be applicable for multiple views. So it's a T01 underscore rule set. The rule set. So click on plus and then I'll add only my one view. So go there. So I will now choose the view. Select it and bring it to the right hand side and click on it. So there's no added to the beam. I will now take a copy of it and put a description. Also. <clears throat> so here I will now go to this place. So the rule set has got what? This is one. And then I have to give the sourcing model name. Right? The rule set will be having a model. So go there, click on plus one. Right? I will now put it T01 model. I got only one model now right? that we are going to create. So T01, click on search. Select and then click on it. So this is called compliance for sourcing eligibility. And then you go there, click on it. So here, we are now going to add the QAs also, fine. So the environmental sustainability which is having an automatic scoring will always be displayed actually. I'll now go to the add condition, fine, click on add condition. Add condition and odd qualification area are the one. It always displayed as the one, fine, with that one. So we'll now go there, always displayed as there, fine, click on okay now. Always displayed as no. And then click on the add qualification. So on which what about that? We are going to add what? Environmental sustainability. It's a very important one in every company. So all the qualification areas, all the three qualifications will be coming. And then click on apply. This has got an automatic scoring now. And normally environmental sustainability will be always automatic. Internal responder will not have any role to play at all. Now we are now going to have a conditional branching now. The conditional branching will be needed. So click on add condition. So I will not say response dependent. Now. I will not drop that. So here I will now say uh, what's called your T zero one is coming as T zero one 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 is coming. So I will now choose this now. T zero one one one. So if this is going to be one one, fine. Go that operator equals to what? Yes. Fine. That is the condition I'm doing. So if it is going to be woman owned, there is a conditional one for which whatever I will now add a qualification. So go there. Click on it. T01. I will not choose this. So what I, I will not choose the financial liability. So financial liability. So if the supplier chooses the woman owned, this QA will be getting added to you. So he has to answer this also. Fine with that. Otherwise, what happens? It will never have any addition at all. Also. <coughs> so click on save. So the required default information is missing for those procurement. So here, what happens? Uh, on the default information, we have to say <coughs> this rule set is for which BU actually. <coughs> if you are not given, you cannot save it at all. No, go there, click on. In the default information, we have to attach the rule set to the appropriate BUs. So they are attached to multiple BUs. I will now add only one BU. Click on the default information. Thank you. Now go to the default information. So in the default information, I will now say the procurement BU. Who is the owner now? The owner is what? EMP9. <coughs> I will now put the EMP9 or the owner. And the internal responder is EMP10 actually. EMP10. So we are now specifying the internal responder, the rule set actually. And that's it. So, so in this place, what happens? We can even add some uh, what's called a text to the questions actually. Fine. Please provide full details uh, and notes as needed. Fine. On the registration question, fine. all this thing we can even provide also. Fine. This will be displayed to you and not doing it. So go there. So we are now giving the default information of procurement view. The event is all now fine. Go there. So is the registration all the, all the events for which one of them is the owner and then he is the intent response. So click on save now. So the rule set is now going to be activated. Actually, you're going to activate the rule set. So click on it. You're going to activate. It. 
and that completes the setup actually with this one one of them in the registration what happens if you go into the, the registration approvals we can even add additional approvals over here now and then the supplier promotions also what happens we can even add additional so <clears throat> i am not adding anything and that so it go there you click on the default information and that not i will now same and then activate the rules click on it now i am not going to specify the approver for the spend authorization so no no so save and close now and the rule set is now active my rule set is active actually and set is active so it has got a this for the procurement view he is the owner and then he is the internal responder and then the registration area we have added the model as well as your qualification areas now one is always displayed one and then one is what uh, based upon that uh, what happens uh, is choice of woman owned the financial viability so click on save and close now now we are going to ask the supplier to make a what happens a spend authorized one fine for which what happens will now go there and then we will now set up the approvals also so we have to uh, do the for the manager supplier spend authorization approvals we will now set up the emp 11 so uh, emp 12 actually so give a save and close on this one emp 12 is a, 11 is a evaluator actually EMP eleven is evaluated. We are ready to come to that point now. In evaluated, we are ready to come to that. So twelve is an approval. So we are ready. Well, now what happens? Twelve is an approval. What is the setup right now? Eleven is an evaluator. We are ready to come to the evaluator part now. So we have seen only the owner, the internal responder. Now the approver. Now click on search. Now search the approver. Supply spend authorization approvals. the one now i would have made it as automatic i click back on edit now and i will make it as what approval required by emp 12 actually this is a must actually fine you have to put the appropriate one you know how to make because in uh, sqm area what happens i will now say approval required <laughs> single approver <laughs> worker <coughs> i will now put emp 12 emp 12 t0 one so it is required by this this gay also needs certain up, certain rules actually otherwise what happens the skm area cannot be seen properly so go through the document and then try to find out which role has to be also allocated to which person so click on save so the manage, first responder means fine click on deploy and that's it this completes all the setup section <coughs> so click on done now you log out and log in right after having made all the setups what i was doing better log out and you want to get log out and log in and you want to create a new rule and create a spend out spend out the configure uh, send out now we are into this step and create a spend authorized supplier actually right? so configure the program is going to copy so we are now take what now we are in the 10th step so we are not going to do it actually <clears throat> so i will not do one thing i will not go there i will not having done all the setups we will go there click on it. we are now going to give this uh, link to the supplier actually sign out so here in this place what happens i have one uh, area also right over so in this place what happens i will now use the apps dot nona for in my friend i will use the supplier's mail id and what apps dot nona supplier is going to respond on this one. So we will not use the apps dot nana as a supplier actually. So we will not go that click on it. We will not log in. So I am the nine team member. T zero one underscore EMP nine. We are going to log in. Now we are going to give a link to the supplier to register himself. He is going to register it. So go there. Go to the what's called. You go there. So go to the configure procurement business function. So click on it. So now all this we are doing for prospective supplier thing. No, prospective and spend authorized both actually. Both okay. So for a prospective also, I uh, was a year to put the appropriate approvals basically. Okay. I'm giving a configure only a spend authorized approver. For well, prospective okay. approvals also, you have to put it appropriately if you are going for a prospective. Okay. But this qualification uh, templates and all it is valid for prospective also, right? Yeah, yeah, everything is valid. Okay. Even for a prospective also, you can add because much. <clears throat> Go there. It is a configure procurement business function. The configure procurement business function. 
So the business function is what you go there, click on it. Do not use this one. T01B, but click on it. Now, once when you go into this place, there are two links which you have to give. For a prospective supplier, you have to give this link. And then for a spent authorized supplier, you have to give this link. So I'm now going to create a spent authorized supplier. So click on it. This link, I will now give it to supplier. And click on it. I will now go there. And then copy the link from here. Fine. When I click on it, it opens up on a new page, actually. Fine. So I will now give this link to the supplier. It is a train, actually. It's a nine-point train now. Right? It's a nine-point train now. Start by looking for your company directly. It's in the so I will know the nine point rate. So it is now coming on my itself. Right? Go there, select it, and then I will now give this link to the supplier. So let me go and then log in. I will now open up a new one. So I am now giving this link to the supplier. Supplier is now pasting this link, and then he is now going to start registering it. He will now paste this link, and then here he will not be getting my A01. And, and I have now gone to the new browser actually. So let's keep it. So he is now going to give a company name T01 underscore. Uh, I will now say uh, sub underscore 10, no, fine, 10 sub because I made a great some suppliers. No, fine, I'm not using it. So go there. Here, tax organization is a mandatory one. And supply type. And go there, want it. He is now going to work small supplier. So he will now choose a small supplier. Fine, that's what you create now. So corporate website. I will now say oraclemana.com. So the first name is going to give it now. I will now say Ananta 10 because I might have given the name also. I don't want to repeat it because sometimes what the, the supplier usernames will be created only with the first name and last name. So Nana 10. Email is what? Nana.app60 at the rate gmail.com. So confirmation email is what? Nana.60 at the rate gmail.com. No given offense. The DUNS number is also mandatory. So I have no given one. There are so many things are mandatory. If you don't give it, what happens? He cannot register at all. Whereas when we are creating it, so many things are not required. When he is doing it, what happens? So many things are mandatory. Actually. If I go there, on it. I have no uh, given one DUNS number here. No there is one DUNS number. Uh, only the IMAN number is there. No DUNS number, I have not done it. It's a nine digit number actually. I will not go there and do something. Nine uh, three plus two plus eight. The number I'm giving it. So tax county, tax country is United States now. Please work on US because the system is now for fully fully tuned for the US now. So because for other uh, countries they have tax maybe. So taxpayer ID is also mandatory. Right? If you are not giving the taxpayer ID, also it will be giving a problem. Right? So T zero one underscore one two three. I'm giving it. Right? So tax registration number. I don't know which one are all mandatory, but there are some things which are not. <clears throat> Who are the best computer suppliers? So he is now giving some note to the what's called the approver actually. Note to approver. Note to approver will be going to the approver actually. So you're not given the company information. You're not given next. Click on the contact. So from here itself, the system will be getting the contact. Click on the next. The system will be getting the contact here itself. So the contact is already created. So click on next now. We'll now go to the what next. So click on next. We'll now go to the address, the address part. So we'll now add address now. Click on it. So suppliers address we are adding. Click on create. We're going to create the supplier address. So address name is what? T01 underscore DDREVSS. Address name. Country is United States. United States. So go there. Address is what? T01. Line 1. So uh, along with the postal code 10020. 10020. And then click on search. So it is ordering and remit to. So email address is what? This is nana.app60 at the rate gmail.com. So it's not coming. I will now add the contact. Uh, add this contact. Go to the action. Then go to select and add. 
So here I will not use this contact. Click on okay, not clicking. So address contact is not added. So click on okay by which the address is now created. So you are now completing the up to third stage. You will now go to the business classification. If you go to the questionnaire area straight away, if you go to the questionnaire area, he will be given the mandatory question over here. Fine. The mandatory question is now coming. And then afterwards, the environmental sustainability is also coming. Whereas the financial visibility is basically an optional one. If you choose the classification as what woman want, then the third questionnaire will be coming. If you go to the business classification, and then if he chooses himself as a business owner, click on plus no fine, he's going to give a classification as what, uh, what the woman owned. So if he chooses this, the third QA will be coming to him now. In the questionnaire, what happens? You can now see the third one will be coming, the financial visibility. So if you go there and then chooses something else, and you want to choose something else, the third question will not come. So it is a basically option dependent action. The third question is option dependent action. If you go to this place, so not choose it as what woman want, then the questionnaire, what happens will be coming later. So at any point of time, what you can do is you can even save for later. He did not have to go into the full one. Month, right? We are in the business classification area. I'll do it now. And remember, bank accounts are mandatory. He has to provide the bank accounts. Whereas when we create a supplier, bank accounts are not mandatory. But when he is doing it, the bank account is a mandatory one. So at this stage, what you can do is you can give a save for later. So the system will be sending an email to that person's email. And then whatever he has filled up up to this stage, what happens, it will be saved actually. Save a letter. And right. click on save a letter. It will be going over there. Right. Your registration request was saved. An email was sent to you with the URL to return to the application registration. Actually. Any tax identification you provided were not saved actually. Fine. Tax identifiers are not saved. Fine. But as a, you had to again fill up those tax identifiers actually. So click on it. Now, having done this, what happens if you go there, click on it. In the main area, what happens? You'll be getting an email from you. I don't know whether the emails and other things are working for me or not. I'm not sure about it. Right? Otherwise, you will not make a fresh registration tomorrow. So it will be coming over here. So now that that looks it has to come over here. Right? If a vision is set properly for sending the emails, then what happens? You'll be getting an email over here. So whatever is saved. Now, this is lost actually. Right? This, this one is lost. Right? You cannot use it again. You cannot use it again. So we had to wait for the email. Now, fine. If the email doesn't come, then I will now make a fresh registration with some other mail ID. So once when he completes his response, what happens? The internal responder will now start to do the response. One question and then two QAs he has to respond. One one question and then two QAs he has to respond. The second one, financial visibility, is based upon his choice of woman owned actually. <coughs> based upon the choice, it will be coming. <coughs> so I'm waiting for it to come. Not, not coming. I don't know whether it will come or not in the vision actually. <laughs> but in the professional sense, what happens? The system will be sending the email. To you. So that's it for the day actually. And then uh, we'll now wait for some more time whether we get the email or not. It is safe for later, and then the vision has to send an email to the supplier's email ID. Not a connection. If it comes, I will now save it as a chunk. We can even begin with that tomorrow. Ah, it has come. Supply registration request was saved. So click on it. This Tanvi Enterprise is coming mainly because of what somebody has modified uh, this one. Now. If you go and then have a look at it, somebody has modified it. So I will now give a cancel. Uh, I will now go there, click on it. Somebody has modified the enterprise information actually. So click on search. You know what? Manage find the enterprise at CM. Manage enterprise at CM information to go there and see this. So here somebody has modified it as what Tanmi Enterprise actually. So that is what is <laughs> so a company name is now coming on this place. 
So if you go there and see. So Tanmi Enterprise Business Unit is now requesting for it. Now I'm request number so on so fine. Complete your supply registration as required. Actually. I will now make it as what? Sub qualification. As a new one now. And tomorrow I will now pick it up and then do it. So I added a what's called. So he has to click on that link and then he has to continue on. Supply it anyway. So tomorrow we'll be using this one because so many mails would have come. So that is why I added this. So Tanvi Enterprise is, uh, is now asking you to whatever the register your supplier actually. So it has now come and then he will be having a link on it. So in that link, he will now click on it and then he will now continue his registration. If uh, he is not able to continue in one go, he can very well save it and then So tomorrow, once when the supplier responds, the internal responder will be evaluating one question and then two QAs and then afterwards the supplier admin will be doing it now. Before which, what happens, it will be going to the approvers. And approver will now, first of all, have a look at it and then he will now approve it. So once when the approval has taken, the system will be creating an initiative actually. In this place, what happens, there will be an initiative. The system will be creating an initiative for the entire activity. For the qualification, the first activity is what? Initiative. We go to the procurement. We go to the supply qualification. So if you click on it, the system will be creating an initiative. I'm not going to manually create also and go to the manage initiatives as of now, whatever said, there are no initiatives in this place. And click on such a There is no initiative. So once when the approval approves this now, the system creates an initiative. And then the internal responder will now start to evaluate the question as well as the QS. And then afterwards, the finally, what happens, the SQM admin will be basically doing assessment. Right? So there are two activities on this now. Fine, that you want to go on and see one is what qualification uh, outcomes and then afterwards what happens assessments actually. the assessment will be done by the SQL admin the qualifications will be uh, evaluated by the responder and then it will be giving an outcome so based upon the responder's outcome the final SQM admin will now assess the supplier whether he can be used for your uh, sourcing or not and five star four star three star rating will be giving the SQL admin will be giving the assessments actually he can also do the question results so result suppliers all these things are there so first upon approval the system will be creating an initiative and then it cannot start to watch the initiative tomorrow i hope that this is the instance works tomorrow also fine <laughs> that is the biggest problem with the mission actually we don't know how long it will work let us assume that it will work tomorrow any questions on this one so setup is really very complex actually fine. and doing it manually is impossible so that's why we use the visions one and then copy it into us and then do it So good then, we'll now begin uh, the, what happens, the supply registration tomorrow. Bye for now. Yeah, thanks, Nana. Bye.